So we're going to continue our course now. Um, and uh, we like to make a slight break in the seven or eight lectures we had before. Before this, we talked about supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And I know we haven't completed that discussion. There's lots more we could do. But I think in the interest of moving forward, from this class on, we're going to try to move to higher dimensions. <coughs> OK? So uh, what, what we're going to start discussing is supersymmetry in quantum field theory. So in two or, or larger space-time dimensions. Now, uh, as you remember, as you remember, uh, supersymmetry was underlain by an algebra, right? An algebra that was Q, Q bar, was like two H, okay? And uh, uh, one or two other things like that. Uh, these, sometimes we had indices of those Qs, which we, we talked about QI, QJ, delta IJ, an algebra like this, and this was like the starting point of our analysis. Okay? Actually, the way we started our lectures, we wrote down a theory which happened to have invariance under this algebra. But then once we understood the algebra, we, we, we rolled with it, we understood superspace, how to implement this algebra, these operators in superspace, you know, all that good stuff. So the first thing we're going to have to ask in higher dimensions is what is the analog of this algebra? Spinners in those three dimensions. 
And it's an interesting and sometimes irritating fact that spinners in different dimensions have different properties. Each dimension mod 8 is its own story. Luckily, there's a repetition in mod 8. So there are basically eight cases where you can see. Okay? And so the first thing we're going to do in this, in this class is to study the properties of spinners in higher dimensions. Uh, and the reason we're going to do this is that we have supersymmetry charges which underlie our algebra are going to be spinners. Okay, so the next half an hour, 40 minutes, will just be spinners. Okay, spinners are what you get from a preferred algebra. Okay, so let us first start case one. Euclidean. Here the sigma 3 and the sigma minus 1 give you the 
anti-gravity. Okay, everything else is equal. Or let's just take this guy with this guy. Here, identity commutes, and this commutes with this guy. So the place where there is a sigma one with a sigma three, that's where you're getting a non-trivial anti-gravity. Okay, and everywhere else is identity as you go down. All the sigma trees. That's clear. So this is obeying the gamma matrix actually. It's also clear that the gamma matrix is square to one because all the Pauli matrices is square to one. Okay. Um, now we want to get the remaining guys, and the remaining guys are gamma n plus one is equal to every the same construction we had here, but I'm replacing uh, sigma one with sigma two. Okay. Sigma two tensor, sigma three, up to sigma three. Gamma n plus two is equal to identity tensor, sigma two, up to sigma three. All the way up to gamma two n is equal to identity tensor, sigma uh, identity, all the way up to sigma two. Okay. Once again. Because sigma twos anti-commute with sigma ones, this guy anti-commutes with this guy, and then all the others is the same object. Okay, so you can easily check that this construction does the job. Okay, great. Uh, Strathfield says the same thing in slightly different words, but I think it's easier just to, you know, he has a an implicit construction of the same same basis, uh, but it's easy. I think just to write it. Okay, great. Now, the first thing we see from this construction is uh, the dimensionality of the space of spinners. We construct. Please. Uh, okay, it's a nice question, but how do you uh, like uh, do the anti commutation of a like tensor product of so any products that you have in tensor product spaces happen independently of each other. So if two operators commute in all but one space okay. and anti-commute in the other, the whole operator commutes and commutes. Let me say, let me say. Suppose I have A1, B1 and A2, B2. I want to find the anti-commute. What does this mean? It means A1, A2, I'll write the tensor tensor, tensor B1, B2, plus A2, A1, tensor B2, B1. That's what it means. Now let's suppose that B1 and B2 commute with each other, whereas A1 and A2 anti-commute. That means that B1, B2 is the same as B2, B1. Okay? So this is equal to, okay? This is equal to, uh, sorry. So let, let's suppose that B1, B2 commute with each other and A1, A2 anti commutator was, uh, uh, right, exactly, was it? So this was equal to uh, A1, A2, B1 tensor B1, B2. Okay? Let me just write this out. A1, A2 plus A2, A1, tensor B1, B2. And now this is zero. The whole thing was zero up here. Okay? So it's just very easy because each product is happening space by space. Is this clear? No, B2, B1 were commuting. Let's suppose B2B1 computed and A2A1 active. <laughs> Had it been the other way around, there would have been a minus sign, and then we would have again got zero because A1A2 A2 would have commuted to each other. Clear? Okay, excellent. Okay, so uh, now the, the next thing we want to, okay, so the first thing we want to do is to find out what dimension we want. But that's very clear because we've got a n two state systems, each Hilbert space is dimension two. So the total dimension of our Hilbert space, the space 
on which this clever algebra acts is true to the power n. That's completely clear. Okay? Now, notice by construction that all our gamma matrices obey the equations gamma i dagger equal to gamma i. This is simply because you take dagger in each individual component and each Pauli matrix is its own dagger. Okay? Now, next thing to notice is that even though each, power, each, each gamma matrix is, is Hermitian, gamma matrices 1 to n and gamma matrices n plus 1 to 2n are Hermitian in different ways. Gamma matrices 1 to n are real symmetric matrices. Okay? They're, they're real symmetric matrices. Okay? Whereas gamma matrices um, uh, What? Sorry, take it, take it. Real is metric. Sigma 1 is 1, 1, 0, And sigma 2 is equal to minus i, i is equal to one. So imaginary x is metric. Okay? Now, gamma matrices uh, n plus 1 to 2n each have exactly one sigma 2. So there's one factor of i. And it's anti-symmetric because it's symmetric in all other factors, so that is metric. One factor. Okay? Because symmetry and symmetry is a thing that interchange in all indices. It's symmetry in all other factors, it's minus one and one. Grand symmetry. Okay? So what we understand, what we see from here is that gamma i i is equal to one to n is equal to real symmetry. Okay? This is a fact of our choice of basis. It's a convenient choice. Whereas gamma i, i is equal to n plus 1 up to 2n, are imaginary and symmetric. Okay. Now we will often, in what we do, need to be able to, uh, need a matrix whose similarity transforms to the gammas um, produce uh, a transposition. So suppose we consider the following matrix. I'll use the same notation as track three so that there's no data confusion. Suppose we, we consider the matrix C is equal to gamma n plus one, gamma n plus two, gamma two n. This is our definition. Okay, the C is called the chart point. Suppose we look at this matrix, then let's look at C inverse. Okay? Um, so, right. I, I want to I compute C inverse gamma I C. That's a gamma I C. This is what I like to do. Now, to do that, what I do is just take this C through the gamma I C. Okay? Now, each gamma i here, now there are two cases. i either lies in the, in the pool from 1 to n, or it lies in the pool from n plus 1 to 2. Let's take these two cases piecewise. Let's say that it lies from 1 to n. Okay? Then this guy has to go through n objects, all of which are not gamma i. I didn't even write down the actor, algebra. You've written it down, but you know it, right? Gamma i, gamma j, and the commutator is equal to 2 n i. This you know, right? The algebra, the, the construction we had to obey this action. Right? So, each of these gamma i's here has to go through n different objects, each, each of which is not equal to i. So we pick up a sign of minus 1 to the power n. Then c comes through here, and then c inverse and we get 1. And so we get is equal to minus 1 to the power n times gamma i. But gamma i was the same as gamma i transpose. Okay? And so we can minus well write this. Because we were looking at i running from 1 to n. Because those were real symmetric things. Clear? Now let's do the same algebra when i is equal to and one of those from n plus 1 to 2n. Now, this gamma i anti-commutes with all the gammas in 
gamma in the C except itself with itself in the bit. So it passing through C, it picks up the sign minus one to the power n minus one. Sorry, why you give the I just for fun. It's correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's real internet. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, now if we look at these gamma i's, which are between n plus one and two n, there you become factor of minus one to the power n minus one. This is clear. But in transposing it, you become an extra minus n. So it's still true that this. Equation is not true. This is only true for the guys from 1 to n. But this equation is true for all guys. Okay? So, for all gamma i's, c gamma i, this is true for 1 to n, minus of this is true for n plus 1 to 2n. But because n plus 1 to 2n have an extra minus n in the transposition, this equation is always true. Is this clear? Okay, and so C, C inverse gamma is C is equal to um, minus 1 to the power n times gamma i plus 1. This is an always true equation. Okay, I hope I haven't done it the other way around. Which anti combinator? Yeah, but you know, every matrix commutes with itself. So for taking that screw, we don't use anti commutator, we use commutator. Right? You have gamma 1, gamma 1, same as gamma 1, gamma 1. There is a factor of 2, right? What? There is a factor of 2, right, when you commute. No. A times A oh, sorry, sorry. Huh, okay. is equal to A times A. Huh. Okay, I was thinking It's a little known fact. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes? Uh, in the basis that you chose, yeah. could I have
when we transpose C itself? What do we get when we transpose C itself? What is C transpose? Okay, now that's easy to work out. Because C was equal to gamma n plus 1 up to gamma 2n. Now we have to take that and transpose it. So we get gamma 2n that uh, transpose, gamma 2n minus 1 transpose up to gamma n plus 1 transpose. Each of these guys picks up a minus sign. So this is equal to, because they're the anti-symmetric thing. So minus 1 to the power n, gamma 2n, gamma 2n minus 1, up to gamma n plus 1. Okay. Now I've got to do the transposes that pick up factor of minus 1 to the n. Now what's left is reordering. Okay. When I take this guy through here, I pick up minus 1 to the power n minus 1. Because I have to flip through n minus 1 guys. The next y will be n, n minus 2, next y n minus 3, and so on. But we know that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 is n into n minus 1 by 2. Okay? And so this is equal to minus 1 to the power n times, times minus 1 to the power n into n minus 1 by 2, which is the same as r times c which is the same as minus 1 to the power n to n plus 1. That's it. Okay. And therefore we deduce that the C matrix under transpositions, C transpose is equal to minus 1 to the power n to n plus 1 by 2 times C. This will also be important. Okay. Great. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is to define a chirality matrix. So we've been working with spinners in two n dimensions. As you know, spinners, sorry, in SO, yeah, two n dimensions. As you know, spinners of SO2n are reducible. They break up into a chiral and an anti -chiral. How do we see that? Okay. Okay. How do we see that? Well, let us define uh, gamma gamma of two n plus one. We define that to be equal to i to the power n gamma one up to gamma two. Now, why do I put this factor of i to the power n? I put that factor because I want gamma 2n plus 1, like all other gamma matrices, to square to 1. Okay? So let's check that it squares to 1. So if we take gamma 2n plus 1, the whole thing squared, that's equal to minus 1 to the power n, because that's i to the power n squared, times gamma 1 up to gamma 2n, times gamma 1 up to gamma 2 n. Right? Now my trick is going to be this. I'll take gamma 1 through all of these to hit this gamma 1 and then I get 1. Then I take gamma 2 through all of these to hit this gamma 2 and then I get 1. And so on. The first guy I have to take through 2 n minus 1 people. But then the next guy I have to take through 2 n minus 2 people. And so on. Okay, so that is e uh, so this is, is, is the same as minus one to the power n times minus one to the power two n times two n minus one divided by two. Okay. Uh, and then n n cancels, then it will be. Minus one to the power two n square. Sorry, because two n to n square. No. Why n n square? I have to take two. Yeah, two n. Two n minus one, guys. Yes. First. Then two n minus two. Then two n minus two. So one plus two plus three up to two n minus one. Then two n minus two. Then two n minus two. So one plus two plus three up to two n minus one. So that's. Yeah. Why 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 two n minus two? No, no. First one is two n minus one. First one is two n minus one. Next one is 2n minus 2. 
Next one is square minus three. That's all. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, you were saying something. Let me just simplify the term and then hear what you were saying. So that minus one into the power a to the power n into n into two a minus one. Uh, but let me check. Ah. Okay. Now, what is this? Let's see. That will be plus, no? Plus. Plus. Thank you. So a then cancels out and it will be It's fine. It's fine. Because you see, if n is odd. A then cancel. Ah, n then cancel. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Minus 1 to the power 2x. Thank you. So 2x squared, which is equal to 1. So, gamma 
nu gamma nu minus gamma nu gamma mu dagger is gamma nu gamma mu minus gamma mu gamma nu and therefore is minus of commutators. The commutators are permission operators are anti-commutators. Okay, so this is a convention where it's anti-hermitian. If you prefer the convention where it's hermitian, you add an I there. Okay, I'm not going to put it. It's okay. okay, excellent. Uh, so this is, it's easy to convince yourself, I'll leave that as an exercise for you, that this construction obeys the, uh, that this construction of matrices obeys the SO2n or SO2n plus 1. Uh, algebra. The difference is only whether mu mu nu range, ranges from one to two n or one to two n plus one. Okay, it's the usual the usual thing, right? You can easily con convince yourself it's true by com by computing. You know, so maybe that's an exercise. X compute gamma uh, in mu nu. Using this, yes. So use this to compute. Okay, and you get the usual thing. Just one second. You get m mu alpha delta mu beta plus m mu beta delta mu alpha minus the other two. You know, the standard SO2n computation relations. So this shows that this represents SO2n on this space. Yes? Uh, you said we can extend this construction to SO2n plus 1. Yes. Can we do the same trick and say, uh, write down say 2n plus 2 using gamma 2n plus 1 and say, let's say chirality matrix for the... Excellent questions. Kanu's question, uh, question is why did we stop here? Why did we now make a product of all gamma matrices, or the product of the first 2n plus 1 gamma matrices, and call that gamma 2n plus 2? And the answer to that is, remember that this gamma 2n plus 1 was product of all the other gamma matrices. So the product of that with itself is same as gamma 2n plus 1 squared, uh, up to maybe some i's, and therefore is proportional to i okay, so it will it can't be extended. It can't be extended. If you want to go to 2n plus 2, you need to include one more harmonic oscillator. One more fermionic harmonic oscillator. You need to work in a 2, two to the power n plus 1 energy. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Great. Okay. So these are the representation matrices for, for SO2n on this Clifford algebra space. Now, Great, we've got some representation matrices, but the next question we're going to ask is, are these are the representations we've got reducible or irreducible? In the case of 2n plus 1, these representation matrices are irreducible. Okay? And uh, 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 there are many ways to convince yourself of that. It's basically the statement that on this space, the only matrix that commutes where all the mu nu's is identity. Okay? And uh, uh, you can try to prove this for yourself. You can try to prove it, for instance, starting with our construction in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the sigma scale. Okay? Uh, it also follows from the fact that, uh, well, okay, you, you see, something that you might know is the space of all matrices on this space. Okay, let's do some counting. Let's pause to do some counting. Sorry, what is the question? The question I'm trying to ask is, is the representation of uh, SO2n plus 1 generated by this matrix reducible to irreducible? Okay, now it's easy to check that it's irreducible for SO2n plus 1, but there's an interesting point here, which also gives you the proof. So not so much for the proof, but for this interesting point, I, can, I want to uh, take a two-minute break. Space of Clifford algebra, I want to know what I want. Suppose I was interested in a basis of matrices that act on Clifford algebra space. Suppose that was my interest. I want to find, you know, not a basis for Clifford for the vector space, but basis for the
the matrices that act on the space. So now the space itself is 2 to the pi n dimensional. So the space of matrices is 2 to the pi n into 2 to the pi n, therefore 2 to the pi 2n dimension. Okay? So let's see. Aside. Basis of matrices. On the space. Is 2 to the power 2n dimension. Correcting accounting, 
We just do this without the one. Now everything we get is independent. Product of independent numbers, and then we get two to the part of n. Uh, two n. Okay? This is a true basis for all matrices in the space. Every matrix in the space can be written as a linear combination of products of anti-symmetrized gamma, gamma is running from 1 to 2 a. Okay? Now, we could just compute how each of these, mat these matrices transform under every root. And can anyone guess how will this guy transform for instance?
which is delta uh, this uh, two delta mu, mu alpha term. And the other term is just re reversing the order with the minus sign. Similarly, when you take this guy through here, you pick up a two new alpha term, and then the other guy is just reversing with the minus sign. Let's first look at the other guys, the guys where you don't have the delta. This had two minus sign, so did this, so it cancels this. Okay? So we only need to uh, look at the contractions. Okay? So if we look at this contraction, this guy with this guy, that will give us a minus gamma nu delta mu alpha. We look at this contraction, we get a plus because we've taken this through, so that's minus. And then we will get plus gamma mu delta mu alpha. Okay? Similarly, from here to here. Okay? And that will combine up into the kind of structure that, I, that we discussed. This kind of trivial algebra will tell you this. Okay? So, sorry, so this was an aside. But a useful aside, because it helps you understand what the nature of these Clifford algebra spaces are. Right? Every matrix is a product, the basis for matrices in the space is a product of anti symmetric right company. It's product of this metric right company. Okay. From there it's clear that SO2n plus 1 uh, generators, SO2n plus 1 generators uh, commute only with uh, with identity. These matrices would also work for SO2n. Will also work for SO2n, but now let, uh, let us ask the question. Yes, it always works for Clifford algebra. Clifford algebra is just this 2 to the by dimensional space. So it works whether you say n uh, SO2 n or SO2 n. But now we can ask the question, okay? Um, now we can ask the question, is the SO2 n uh, spin-off also irreducible? Okay. Does anyone have an opinion on this? We have gamma to n plus one, so it's not irreducible. But from the uh, um, uh, from the reasoning that I gave you, okay, why was it not? Okay, yeah. So first, let's see that it's not irreducible. Chintan's answer. The answer is it's clear. If you take m alpha beta, or let's say call it m i j, and i and j are one to two n. Then there is obviously one matrix, okay, that anti-commutes, um, uh, that anti -com that commutes with each of these m, m alpha beta. Why is that? That is, as Chintan said, it's gamma to n plus one. Now you might object gamma to n plus one anti-commutes with all gamma. It doesn't commute with gamma. But because it anti-commutes with all gamma, it commutes with m alpha beta. Because m alpha beta is quadratic in numbers. So you get two minus signs, you get a plus sign. Okay, and therefore we conclude that uh, th th that these MIJs by so to n, yeah, the MIJs for this um, uh, for these uh, uh, for for SO, uh, for so to n uh, are not implemented irreducibly. In fact, we can break up the spinner space into the irreducible blocks. We can break up the spinner space into the irreducible blocks, which are, and these irreducible blocks are, uh, the projectors onto them are 1 plus gamma 2 n plus 1 plus minus by 2. So you take a spinner, act with this projector on this, okay? These projectors commute. Firstly, these are projectors. Why are these projectors? They square to one. How do we see that? We see that because we square it. Let's see what happens. We get one plus two gamma two n plus one plus one because gamma two n plus one squares to one divided by two, which is one plus divided by four, which is one plus gamma two n plus one by two. Let's call this p plus minus. So p plus minus some n squared. This is plus minus. But here, these are projectors. 
Next, they commute with all SO2 engineering. That's also clear because identity commutes with all SO2 engineering generators, and so does Raman vector. Okay? Now, some of you may be wondering, what went wrong with that earlier argument? I gave you an argument that SO2N plus 1 generators, none of them commuted with M, M alpha beta because they were all in the Actually, that argument was a little slick. That argument was a little slick because I didn't, didn't, look, at, didn't, didn't look at linear, linear computations. You know, I showed you that no basis element computes, but how do I, what, what, how do I know about linear computations? Okay. Now, the only way that a linear combination can commute is it's a li linear combination of two objects that transform in the same representation. Linear combination of what? Three index. Three Let's say three index with seven index. How can it? You see, it can. It, I mean, it doesn't for so two n plus one, but in general, in general it can. Okay, because the space what we got was the space of tensors. Right? And the space of tensors are not all independent representations because of the epsilon symbol for SO2. Right? You understand? Let me say this. Suppose I take SO2 n and I take the space uh, uh, I take the space of tensors. Then we have A mu1 up to mu n, these are all independent. Up to n. But if I make this n plus 1, I can contract this with an epsilon tensor, which then makes it the same as a tensor with whose number of indices is n minus 1. Is this clear? So there's a conceivable relationship, which is that if I take the self dual part of the tensor, Okay? The tensor plus star of that tensor, uh, of, uh, you know, the higher tensor. Okay? Then that could commute with this. Yeah. And so you're saying if, even if they are not like in the same dimension, if you can get from the epsilon, like if subtraction and then match it with this. Exactly. Like take the linear combination as we do in the self dual. Exactly. If you want to say it this way, if you try to write the SON representations in terms of SO2N representations in terms of young terminal, mm -hmm. the number of columns stops at N, not at 2N. If you try to anti-symmetrize more than N indices, you, it's the same as anti-symmetrizing less than N indices. Okay? So you could conceivably have had a relationship. We didn't carefully check it. We can for SO2N plus one that doesn't work. But for SO2N, it does. Eigenvalues were only plus 
1, or minus 1. Okay. Now, what was gamma 2 at plus 1? Well, let's remember what, what it was. Um, gamma 2 at plus 1, let's, let's remind ourselves of our construction with previous things. Exactly those factors of i to the power n in the definition of sigma to n plus one. Okay, so we chose the factor so that it would square to one, and this squares to one. Maybe I've got a minus sign. That's the only thing. Okay, and it could be a okay. Let's since we've done this, let's check if I've got a minus sign off. Uh, here sigma one times sigma two was i sigma three. So I would get the factor of i to the power n. And in my definition, did I have an i to the power n? Yes, yes. Then I think here, right? I get a yeah, I, uh, no, I get a minus one to the power. N. Yeah. If I just defined it as i to the power minus n, which I could have done. Then even this addition factor. All these are trivial matters. Because of the permutation, right? That we take the gamma one to gamma n plus one to do the. No, at the moment I'm just calculating. I'm just calculating i to the power n, gamma one, gamma two, up to gamma two. I'm just calculating. I'm putting this in here. I'm not taking anything through. Just doing the calculation. Gamma one times gamma. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He said I did the wrong order. Because the way I can, I did gamma 1 and gamma n plus 1. Then gamma 2, so there's an additional sign. It's worth calculating that sign. Uh, good point, thank you. So, okay, let me do that, let me do that. Let me first bring the gamma n plus 1 to this. That, yeah, so that's minus 1 to the power n. In this first sector, everything else is identity. Yeah, yeah, but. Kanu's point is that the way I presented the calculation, I multiply this with this, then this with this. Whereas our definition was gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4. Okay? So he said there may be signs from, uh, from anti commutators, I think. Good point. Okay? Now, in, in order to get that right, let me move this gamma n plus 1 to near gamma 1, move gamma n plus 2 to near gamma 2, and so on. I will pick up the sign. The first guy will require going through n minus 1 days. So I will pick up the sign n into n minus 1 by 2. There's some funny sign there. There's this guy. Uh, th ah, minus 1 n into n plus 1. Ah, n minus 1. There's a funny sign there. With my definition, there's a funny sign. I could have got rid of the definition by adding that, you know, sign of the original gamma, gamma 2 n plus 1. None of this matters. 
Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, excellent. Fine. So, where were we? What, what, do I want, what do I want to do this calculation for? I wanted to do the calculation to show you something. The thing I wanted to show you was that this gamma to n plus 1, all its eigenvalues are either plus 1 or minus 1 that we knew because gamma to n plus 1 squared is 2 1. But moreover, it has equal number of plus 1s and minus 1s. Right? Because sigma 3 has eigenvalues plus 1, minus 1. Sigma. Okay. So there are as many plus 1s as minus 1s. Okay? So what this matrix is is, a, is an operator whose eigen, if we diagonalize it, okay, in eigenvalue space, it looks like 1 minus 1, 0, 0. 1 to be diagonalized. In some cases, it looks like this. Okay? And this first projector projects onto the first part, the 1. Because it's 1 plus this. So in this basis, it's simply 1 in that block and 0 in the bottom block. Because minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay? So the project, this is what gamma 2 n plus 1 looks like in this basis. And in the same basis, P plus looks like this, 1, 0, 0, 0, and this is equal to P minus is equal to 0, 0, 0, 1. Right? So you see that what, what this projector does is to project onto the subspace of spinners that have eigenvalue plus 1 or minus 1 under gamma 2 n plus 1. This is half the dimension of spinorial space. Okay, so it breaks up the spinner into two, two parts. One of which is the eigenvalue plus one sector, the other which is the eigenvalue minus one sector. Projects that. And it does this in an SOB invariant manner. Yes. So that if you take something that, that had eigenvalue plus one and rotate it, it doesn't mix with the eigenvalue manner. Okay. So, so these, so what, what we get is that this spinner space splits up into two representations of SO. Uh, of SO2 n. And these two representations are called the chiral and anti chiral space. All clear? Okay? So we understand now our, spin our uh, spinner space well. Good. All the, uh, all the uh, gamma matrices are off diagonal, but any of you are diagonal. They act like this. Block that. Right. Uh, Chintan's comment that the other way, uh, gamma matrices were off diagonal was simply the statement that ga gamma matrices anti commute. Okay? Gamma matrices anti commute with gamma, uh, gamma 2 n plus 1. Therefore, gamma i 1 plus gamma 2 n plus 1 by 2. Okay? The uh, uh, gamma i 1 plus two, uh, gamma uh, uh, by 2 is equal to 1 minus gamma 2n plus 1 by 2 gamma i. Okay? What does this mean? This means that suppose I act on a spinner that is in this part. So that I get something non zero. Okay, so this part projects on the spinners of this set. And then I check the answer which part is it in. It's in this part because of this factor. So that tells me that this the gamma matrix is like this. Because the same thing is true for the answer. Okay, therefore, gamma matrices in this block basis are entirely off that. Whereas n mu nus were entirely block that. All here? Okay, x. I was doing everything so far. Okay? 
we will change to Lorentzian in a bit. But first, here, the simplest representation theory is Euclidean. And it's also physically relevant for many purposes. For instance, sometimes we want to analytically continue quantum field theory to Euclidean space. We need to know what Euclidean gamma is. Right? So we need to know it for physical purposes. It's also the simplest case. Once we understand the Euclidean case very well, we're understanding the Lorentzian case is easy. OK, excellent. So, going from Euclidean to Lorentzian, these gammas will also get some factors of i's as well. Correct. Like, gammas are not uh, like some time or something. Like, why, why do no, they it's just a matter of asking for gammas that obey the Clifford algebra in Lorentzian space. Clifford algebra in Lorentzian space is gamma mu, gamma nu is equal to 2 eta mu. Okay. Let us use the mostly positive metric. So it's minus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So now suppose you give me a construction of gamma matrices in Euclidean space. And I want to get from there a construction of gamma matrices in Lorentzian space. All I do is take gamma, let me put it as one and then the last one is minus one. All I do is take gamma to n and multiply it by i. Now it's square, it will become minus one instead of one. And so it will play this out. So it's just an algebraic matter of constructing the Clifford algebra in Lorentzian space once you have the Clifford algebra in Euclidean space. However, this algebraic fact, of course, has an interpretation. It's the usual analytic continuation from Euclidean to Minkowski space. But just think of it as algebra. So that gamma 2n in a sense behaves like a time. Once we do this, that will be the zero direction. Yes. OK? The reason is that there were vector indices. Everything with a vector index analytically continues the same way. Otherwise, you get trouble. OK. Uh, good. So, all good, all good. Now let us move on. We've understood the spinner space, we've understood how to take transpose. There's one thing we've still not understood how to do, and that is to take complex optimization. Okay? So I want to understand what happens when I what happens when I take my representation matrix. Okay, what happens when I take my representation matrix with alpha, beta, and I compute its star? Okay, this, as you, as we will see in a minute, is a question of whether these representations are real or complex. But we see. Okay, so. Um, Transpose is like inverse representation. So what were you saying? Yes, that's what we can use. Because they're because they're Hermitian. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that's precisely what we can use. So this was gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus gamma beta, gamma alpha. It's a pink, right? Okay. By two star, which is just put star everywhere. But as Chintan pointed out, this is the same as taking transpose, because gamma dagger was equal to gamma. So this is equal to gamma alpha transpose, gamma beta transpose, minus gamma uh, uh, beta transpose, gamma alpha transpose. Okay, but remember, we had a rule for transport. And that rule was this one. C inverse gamma I C was equal to minus one to the power N times gamma transpose. Okay, so every time we have this guy, gamma transpose, we can replace this by C inverse, gamma alpha C, C inverse gamma beta C, minus C inverse 
minus is similar term to this guy. Also, there were three signs, this minus one to the power n, but they appear twice. So the sign is over. Okay. C times C inverse is one. So this is equal to C inverse gamma alpha gamma beta. From the other term, we get a minus gamma beta gamma alpha. Okay. And so we see by two C. And so we see. And so we see that gamma alpha beta star is equal to C inverse gamma alpha beta C. Which, uh, as Chintan said, was the same fact that it basically behaves the same way as it would have the transpose. Okay? Just keep track of signs a bit here. Okay. The only complication with transpose is that when you transpose a product, A B transpose becomes B transpose A transpose. Whereas when you complex conjugate, A B complex conjugate is A complex conjugate, B complex conjugate. There's one sign that's not there because we have this complicator. So that would we'll just be careful about that. Okay. Great. What is the importance of this object, this relationship? The importance of this relationship goes as follows. Um, if we And we get that a chi 
is equal to gamma alpha beta chi, just like delta psi is gamma alpha beta chi. Okay? So what we've concluded is this. First, take a spinner representation and its complex function, they transform the same representation. We take a spinner and its complex function, they transform the same representation. Second, if you want to get them to transform in exactly the same way, you know what, it's not enough to put star, you have to also multiply by C. Okay? So, now that we've got this, um, now that we've got this, This is the question. This is the definition of reality, but it's a definition that we will only make if it has if this equation has solution. As I will just show you, some, in some dimensions this equation has solutions, in some dimensions the equation has no solutions. Yes. So it's impossible to deal with SO in those dimensions, SO2 and covariant real spinners. Okay? So we're going to study this equation. Now, you see, whenever you impose a new equation on something, one thing you want to check is whether there are integrability constraints for this equation. Often, something that's useful is to write that, make that equation work twice and see if you get back what you want. Okay? So, let's see. So, I, I'm trying to impose this equation. So now let's take this equation in complex quantity. If this equation is true, then it's also true that psi star is equal to c star psi. Just take complex quantity of those things. Okay? But psi was equal to c psi star. So that must also be true that c star c psi psi star. Psi star was equal to C star C. Squares, square is one half. 
Can you put I? It doesn't work because complex conjugate of I is minus I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing you can do. I, I'll show you what you do. Okay, that's a good try. So, Schumann's idea was to put alpha here. Okay, then we would have got this equation with an alpha star. And we would have got alpha, alpha star. So you can't fix up the sign. Right? Good. Uh, we are using for knowledge that C has been defined so that its eigenvalue is i to plus one. So I'm not, I didn't bother with the alpha, but I've been more systematic this way. Okay? Great. Okay. Now, let us check what C star sees. Okay? So what does C star see? Well, there are many ways to do it, but let's, maybe the simplest is just to be explicit. So C was equal to gamma n plus 1 gamma 2n. We define it with some i term, justice, right? C was, ah, there. Now, okay, great. Uh, so now C star. Each of these is imaginary matrix. So it's equal to minus 1 to the power n times C. Right? So C star C is, so C star C is equal to minus 1 to the power n times C squared. So now it's a matter of computing C squared. But now we're total experts in computing things like this. Because we take commas through. First time we take it through n plus n minus 1 times next n minus 2 times. Uh, so you get is equal to minus 1 to the power n into minus 1 to the power n into n minus 1 by 2. Is equal to minus 1 to the power n into n plus 1 by 2. We check that they've got the same answer. Same answer. Okay. Great. So you see this equation can be imposed. Okay. This equation here can be imposed as a, as a reality equation if n into n plus 1 by 2 is even. Okay? Now, when does, when does that happen? Let's see. n is equal to 0. Yes. n is equal to 1. No. But n or odd, it doesn't happen. No? What? Like, if you take n even, then n plus 1 is odd. Yeah. When this product was even. No, not, a, not even. When this product was 1 plus 4. 4, four yeah. Huh. Huh. It should be multiple of 4. Yes, so one of these, either n or n plus 1 has to be a multiple of 4, basically it's that. Right, that's the only way it can work. Because if one of them is even, the other one's odd. Yeah. So no help from that. Okay, good. So we, so, so these, these, these guys have, either n or n plus 1 has to be a multiple of 4. And so 3 will work because then n plus 1 is a multiple of 4. And 4 will work because n is a multiple of 4. Okay? And now you see that it will go in steps of 4. So 7 will work and 8 will work. And so on. You see that n, everything is periodic and peri periodicity and periodicity 4. Okay? But n was half the dimension. So things with dimension are periodic with periodicity 8. Okay? So let's see. So when could we do it? Uh, we were able to do, impose this, this reality condition for SO6, SO8, and so on. Not for SO2 and SO4. Okay. Now, uh, let's go back to the SO. Um, SO2n uh, plus 1s. Okay, 
for reality we will be discussing SO2n. What about SO2n plus 1? Well, the first question we should ask ourselves is that this uh, nice property for gamma matrices that we check for SO2n, does that also work for gamma 2n plus 1? Okay, so let's check that. So let us compute C inverse gamma 2n plus 1 C. Now, we can just put C, C inverse, C inverse C in between each of these. So what we get is equal to gamma uh, 1 transpose gamma 2 transpose gamma 2n transpose whatever the factor of. i to the power n was there, it's not changed. So plugging in what gamma 2n plus 1 was and taking transpose of every element. Is it clear how I did this? Between any two gamma, I, I put the factor of C inverse. And then I used that uh, C inverse times C gives me this with a minus 1 to the end. But minus 1 to the end is present to n times. So that factor times. Is this clear? Should I write that down more clearly? Shuman, you have a thing. No, no, I just think for it, but I think it's clear. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, but I'll just write what's going on. Okay, so this is C inverse. So what is this? I just substitute first. Here. Gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 2n times minus 1 to the power n. C inverse C. That's what it is. Then I write this as minus 1 to the power n. C inverse gamma 1 C. C inverse gamma 2 C. C inverse gamma 3 C. And so on. C inverse gamma 2n C. What? I. 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 Here. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Next step. I use C inverse gamma one C. Is it minus one to the power and gamma one transpose? Okay. Now I'll use get this phase. An even number of times, maybe two n times, so I can forget about it. So this is i to the power n gamma one transpose gamma two transpose gamma two transpose gamma two n transpose, which is the same as now n of these have nothing. They themselves. The remaining n pick up a minus sign. So which is now minus 1 to the power n, gamma 2n plus 1. Uh, ah. Wait, I wanted to make this, I wanted to make this transpose. Good, good point. What I wanted to do is not take the transpose here, but to Move. What? It's sigma 3, so it's transpose. Okay, or I move it here. Right? So that would give me, let's see what the factor is that was then. If I move it there and so on, then I've got C transpose. Okay? Um, right, so let, let me move, I get factor minus 1 to the power 2 n into 2n minus 1 by 2. But this is same as equal, uh, same as minus one to the power n. Why? Because this number is always one. Two n squared. Yeah. Yeah. Two n. That's a nice way to say. Two n squared goes away. It's minus one to the power n. Okay. So this also works. Meaning C's. Hmm. Oh, meaning gamma two n plus. 
Swala obeys the same transposition rule as all the other Kamas obey. So everything we said about transposition and therefore about reality also works for SO2 and plus 1 because the only thing we used to get reality conditions in SO2 and plus 1 is that is the fact that there was dagger and the fact that under transposition C did the job. Okay, our arguments were general enough so that everything just goes through. Okay, so we see the we see the point. We see that this equation this reality equation okay can be imposed for SO what was it? We got three four so SO six SO seven SO eight Not 
then sends a irreducible representation. Okay? So now we have more, a more refined question for SO2. Suppose I take a chiral spin. Okay? Suppose I take a chiral spinner and I act on that chiral spinner with this equation. Plus 
C psi star is in the plus n space if minus 1 to the power n is 1, that was n, n is equal. But it's in the mi minus eigen space if minus 1 to the power n is odd, and therefore if n is odd. Okay? And so we conclude that if we are interested. Okay. Now, when this complex conjugation operation flips spinners, that is, it takes something from being a chiral spinner to an anti chiral spinner, then we call the representation complex. Okay, it's like in SUN, the complex conjugate of the fundamental transforms in a different representation, which is the anti -fundamental. Is this clear? So what, what complex conjugation is doing if n is odd? So for SO1, SO3, SO, sorry, SO2, SO6, uh, SO10, uh, okay? What complex conjugation is doing is flipping the chiral representation, turning it into the anti chiral representation. Okay? So the question of imposing a reality question, the question of imposing a reality condition on a particular representation just doesn't arise. Of course, you can impose a reality condition on a sum of two representations. If you can have something and its complex conjugate, that's a spinner plus an anti chiral spinner, that can be real. You think that plus cannot be made into real? Just a, a plus cannot be made real because the star of the plus is minus. Okay? If you have plus, plus minus, you can make that real. So, if we're interested in the question of dealing with chiral spinners, dealing with spinners of a definite chirality, and imposing reality conditions. Okay? First thing that is impossible in SO2n when n is odd. Just because complex conjugation changes the representation in which the spinner transforms. Okay? And other than this, it's the same rule as SO2n plus because the mechanics for the spinners didn't change. It's just the chirality business that changed. Okay? And so we find that SO2n. Okay. Now, when could you, did it work for SON? It worked for 0 or 3. 3 doesn't work anymore because that's complex. Right? The switches plus and minus representation. So, real. For zero mod. When was it pseudo real there? Let's look at uh, two. Pseudo real. No, pseudo real means that the representations C. Sorry, I should have said this. Pseudo real means the following. Pseudo real means that psi and C psi star transform in the same representation as a irreducible representation. Nonetheless, the equation psi is equal to c psi star has no significance. So the representation theory language looked okay, but you can't do it. Okay? What it will actually mean is that we have to double up the spinner. We will have to do psi 1 is equal to c psi, psi 2 star. And psi 2 is equal to minus c one, psi 1 star. And that relative minus will make it work. Let me let me finish writing the table and I'll say this. Two mod four. And complex. Okay? Complex for one and three mod four. Complex means C psi star and C transform in different representations. But they always transform in different What? No, we showed that they transformed with the same matrices on spinner space. But for SO2n, spinner space is made up of two representations. Okay? And now we just checked that when n was even, the, ch the chiral spinner became an anti chiral spinner. So transform different representations. Is this clear? Okay. Now, what was, let me just say pseudo real again, since it's probably not clear. Pseudo real means that this equation, psi is equal to c psi star, has no solutions. Well, you can ask, how can we make it have solutions? Suppose we don't have one spinner but two. Or in general, an even number. And 
condition psi i is equal to c psi j star omega i j, where omega i j is an anti-symmetric matrix. Now if we run this integrability condition, uh, okay, we, we have omega i j is an anti-symmetric matrix such that omega squared is equal to omega squared. Now we run, now let's run this integrability condition again. Let's take the star, so we have size C size star is equal, it's a, and omega equals omega. Omega you should think of as a matrix 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, minus 1, 0. It's the matrix that we use in symmetric curves. Okay? Uh, size star is equal to C star um, uh, psi j star omega i j. Let me write the omega i. Omega i j psi j star. It be and then we once again put this. Psi j. Thank you. And then we put this back in here. This is equal to C star C omega omega i j and then this is omega i j k j k psi star this business in dimensions where it's pseudo real was minus one but this is the square of another matrix which gives us another factor of minus one okay this is equal to minus delta i k Also, you were talking about that it has to be higher dimensional rather than the single constant cannot make it. Yes. Cannot dream of yes. it. Yes. But a matrix can. But a matrix can. Okay? So if you pair up spinners in pairs, then the pair can be made complex. That can be made real. Which of course is cheating. You could always. You take psi and you take psi star, just add psi plus psi star and it's real. It's basically your spin. Okay. Right. But, yeah, Why do we want to preserve the chirality? Why? Why do we want to preserve the chirality? Good question. Um. Why? Do, I, I'm interpreting your question as meaning why do we want to deal with the spinner that has a different chirality? Is this what is this what the question is? Yes. Okay. You see, our spinners will be either in physics will be either fermions or will be supersymmetry charges, or something like that. Okay? Now, if you can use some, if you can make a field chiral, it has fewer degrees of freedom than a field that is not chiral. So, when you can make something chiral, you've got a, a smaller theory, theory with smaller number of fields, than when you cannot. Okay? okay? So, sometimes some theories are written in terms of parallel fields. The supersymmetry algebra also will sometimes involve chiral fields. Okay? Now, even non chiral is a special case of chiral. In the sense that you could have equal numbers of positives and negatives. But if you allow yourself to deal with chiral, you get more flexible. Your field content needn't have as many pluses as minuses. By pluses, I mean chiral fields. Fields with eigenvalue plus one under gamma two. Okay? So, by in some dimensions, you have more flexibility for writing theories, let's say, than you have in others. Those are the dimensions in which you can make, you can use chiral fields. Okay? This will become clearer as we study theories and study supercharges. But it's the same kind of thing, right? I don't know, do you remember our discussion of superfields? Okay? Uh, you remember that we wanted to deal with superfields that were as short as possible. That's why we put chirality conditions on the superfield, d theta on psi. Why did we want to do that? Because we wanted a theory with not too many degrees of freedom. It's the same kind of thing. You're not forced to, you can deal with non chiral theories, but you can also deal with chiral theories, and those have fewer degrees of freedom. Okay, this will become clear next. Okay, the good question. Go on. Uh, other questions? on 
this, the matrix is the generate the representation, transform in a different representation. Okay? So that complex conjugation takes one representation to another representation. It takes the chiral spinner to the anti chiral spinner. Something M inverse representation theory times M will take you to matrices, representation matrices, but not in the same representation, but in the different representation. Okay, it's exactly like the fundamental and anti-fundamental of SUF. Quarks are in the fundamental. Quark stars are in the anti-fundamental. These are just two different representations. Right? Okay, let me since there are so many questions about this, let me say one more. Not for this audience, right? This audience is extremely sophisticated. So, uh, let me remind you about the representation theory of SO2. Okay. SO2N states in representations are labeled by Kaplan charges. SO2N is almost the simplest group to think of in the world. Because the Kartan charges are that in different commuting two planes. And the Kartan charges are just rotations in the, in the different commuting two planes. Let's call them H1, H2, Hn. Now, since all you guys are very sophisticated, you probably know what the highest, what the weights of the spinorial uh, representation are in this, in this, in this space. Spinners are states whose representations are plus minus half, plus minus half, plus minus half. Okay? Because you can have either plus or minus, the total dimension of the spinner space is 2 to the power n. But you also know that chiral spinners and anti chiral spinners are different depending on whether you have an odd or an even number of minus, minuses. Okay, chiral even number of minus. Anti-chiral
These are human charges. If psi transforms at equal power i alpha, psi star transforms at equal power minus i. No, no, I actually the, I need to be commission. I did not use will change. Like, because suppose I have a field which transforms like into the power i yeah. alpha. Psi? Uh, complex one we have we have minus i. Okay? This is the point of complex computation, right? It's CPT theorem. What C does is ch change all sides of charges. Okay, it's, it takes quarks to empty quarks. That's what charge computation is. Okay? So now let's look at a let's look at a chiral spin. I want to see what the charge conjugate of chiral spin is. Chiral spinner has even number of minuses. But minuses become pluses. So its complex function has an even number of pluses. Now when n is even, that also means an even number of minuses. But when n is odd, it means odd number of minuses. So you see that if you take the complex conjugate of a chiral spinner, you get an anti chiral spinner if n is odd. But you get a chiral spinner if n is even. Okay? So what I'm saying is this is simple representation theory. It's an obvious fact. What's this argument here? Okay, we are over time. Let me just say the last thing, the last things that we have. Any reference for that? I don't for what? This last part, I don't know. For this, the place I learned this from is this book by George I called uh, Lee Algebras and Particle Physics. Uh, some of your friends may know of better references. My references are old. Okay, excellent. Just two minutes more until we'll end. I just want to... Um, Okay. Uh, right. The next thing we wanted to do is to repeat this for SO, for Lorentzian. And then I want to write down the supersymmetry algebra. I suppose that's nice.